For more on the Fed's decisions impact, let's bring in Terry Duffy, the CME Group's chairman and CEO. His company reported earnings before the bell this morning, beating estimates for both revenues and earnings. Terry, it's always great to see you. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate you having me. We appreciate uh, you watching us every night. Uh, Terry, you know, I want to get your reaction <laughs> to what the Fed, the Fed has done. We know you do because you email us constantly um, <laughs> to what the Fed has done in the context of this market. I mean, does this all make sense uh, in your mind, the levels we are at the markets, the valuations we are at, the huge gains in technology with the backdrop that rates will stay higher for longer and could even go higher from here? Yeah, here, I, Melissa, I think it's clear as mud, and everybody that I've known over the last several years that talked about interest rates has been absolutely wrong. Everybody said the Fed would raise 25 <laughs> basis points, 50 basis points, 100 basis points, and stop. And if you managed your risk, and that's what I do, I manage risk here at CME Group, and if you would have managed your risk based on what you thought the Fed was going to do or not be doing, you would be out of business like we've seen a lot of the smaller banks, and we saw another one today with PacWest going to be sold. So people need to manage risk. It's really hard to predict what the Fed is ultimately going to do. I think it's one of the reoccurring themes that I keep hearing, you know, from some of the pundits, not just on your show but others, is that, you know, the verdict is still out on what is going to happen, whether inflation is going to be under control, whether it's not going to be under control. And I think those three words, verdict is still out, or four words, I should say, is critically important. And people need to manage that risk because margins are thin. So I don't know ultimately what it means other than everybody that I've talked to over the last year has been dead wrong when it comes to what the Fed was going to do. And whether there's going to be a soft landing or not, I think the Fed's done a pretty good job of threading the needle to where we're at today when he was bold enough to make a comment that he doesn't see a recession because I think a lot of us, you know, in the business thought we're going to see a recession over the last 12 to 18 months for sure, and we still has not materialized. So I think he's done a lot of good at the same time. But, boy, if you're going to try to sit around and try to make a prediction, sometimes it's better instead of talking to markets, you should listen to the markets so they'll tell you what they want to do. So what are you hearing in terms of the activity and the various products that you offer? Um, you know, we're reading constantly well, about zero day data expiration options, the popularity, how, yeah. you know, the number of those exceed the number of S&P 500 options on any single day. I mean, it's, it's just staggering. Um, so how does your market view get reflected in your business? Well, here, zero data options, you know, we, we all list these short term options and they trade on like so at SIBO, they trade and they they uh, expire into cash at CME Group. They they trade and they expire into a futures contract and you have to take delivery. So that's the only difference. So some of the retail will go more focusing on the, the trade over at SIBO as it relates to the delivered into cash. But, you know, listen, our options portfolio in our business goes out multiple quarters into multiple years. In the the beauty of CME Group is, you know, that, that's a small percent of the bigger part of our business, which is futures trading. And nobody else has that, Melissa, as you know. So we're the largest futures exchange in the world, and we have a growing options business on top of it. For me, it's a win-win for CME Group. We continue to manage it. Others don't have what we do as it relates to some of the product mixes we have. Terry, typically in our world, when you're early, you're wrong. But you've been ahead of so many different things. And in October, I think it was Halloween of 2021, you announced that deal with Google. Ten-year deal, cloud infrastructure. I think a lot of people said, what does Terry Duffy see that we don't? And now here in July of 23, AI, all those things, markets. I mean, you're sort of at the forefront. Maybe speak to that integration and now what that means to markets, because I think you're really positioned well for this. Well, Guy, I appreciate that. And we did see a lot of things with Google and the cloud. And, and, and I'm extremely pleased to say that we've moved many applications from market data applications to clearing applications into the cloud, and we're progressing right along. But one of the things you touched on, and I know everybody's touching on AI, but we're learning so much about AI and machine learning with our partners at Google, and that is doing wonders for us to see how the market's going to look in the future. I don't know how much artificial intelligence is going to take place into the market. So how much of these inputs are going to go into 
people's algorithms today and how much are they going to go into them tomorrow? Is it going to be good or is it going to be bad? How is market structure going to be affected by this? I will say one thing. We'll be at the forefront of any change that's happening. I do think it's going to change. I hope for the better. I believe it's going to be for the better. But this is an interesting time. And I know you guys talk about AI a lot, and you're probably sick of talking about it. But in the markets themselves, in the market structure, we have not talked about AI. And I think there's going to be a lot of conversation in the next couple of years as it relates to that part of the business. So in the con, you know, when we talk about AI, we're mostly talking, Terry, about the spending ramp associated with AI that needs right. to happen. Do you see that just underway in the financial services industry? Is it just underway at CME Group? Well, we, yes, I think it is just underway, and I don't think we've scratched the surface in the financial services yet. As Guy said, we came up with this transaction with Google uh, a little over a couple of years ago on Halloween, and we are just putting our applications in there. We have not even gotten our markets into the cloud yet, Melissa. We're hoping to have that done in the next year or two. And once we do that, we're going to see how the different artificial intelligence, with, along with the machine learning feeding these artificial intelligence, how the markets react to them. And I think it's going to be a fascinating time. Change is always difficult, but hopefully change brings efficiencies to the marketplace and lets more and more people participate in a way that makes sense for them to mitigate and manage their risk. So really exciting times as it relates to the markets with AI.